Hello, I'm Richard Gisbert, and you're at the Listening Post. Act of Valor, the film that features trained SEALs, courtesy of the Pentagon. Militainment is a phenomenon we first looked at a few years ago. The relationship between the U.S. military and Hollywood is a symbiotic one, and it tends to work like this. Filmmakers get some fighter planes, helicopters, and aircraft carriers with which to make their movies, and the Pentagon gets some free and positive publicity. The U.S. military now has an office in Los Angeles where these deals are put together. The latest cinematic offspring of this relationship is called Act of Valor, and it's taken the collaboration one giant step further. The producers did not just get access to military equipment and facilities, they cast active duty military personnel in the lead roles. This blurring of the line between Pentagon propaganda and Hollywood has now reached the stage that we're not even sure that there is a line anymore. The Listening Post's Nick Muirhead now on the ties that bind the worlds of Warcraft and film. thing is way bigger than we thought it was. He could have been speaking about the film itself. Actor Vela didn't even start life as a movie. It is intended to be a simple recruitment promo and it grew into a feature-length film that has exceeded expectations at the box office. In its first weekend in theaters, the movie raked in twice as much money as it cost to produce. Actor Vela is essentially a new frontier in Hollywood and military collaborations. This is the first movie uh, purporting to tell the story of super secret Navy SEALs starring the SEALs themselves. Action. It really kind of crosses a line of just we're, we're allowing a production company to use some of our assets so that it provides an educational role. It crosses a line in, into something else. I mean, the Navy looks like it's producing this. You're no longer simply borrowing material or ideas or, or roles, but you're actually borrowing the military itself to make a movie. This is entirely new and it's dangerously new. It's going a little bit beyond propaganda. It's something else entirely. It's overlaid with all of the necessities of entertainment, the tropes and the genre of the war film, which creates a, a a whole storyline that is basically a fantasy about war. And that's the problem. You've got something masquerading as very real that's a fantasy of war. We contacted the Navy and the Pentagon for comment. Both declined. But Wired, the online magazine, quotes Navy spokesperson Amanda Greenberg saying, we aim to inspire the next generation of Navy recruits to consider the special warfare community. Honestly, we are always hiring. Actor Vela is just the latest piece of what has come to be known as militainment in a relationship between Hollywood and the Pentagon that goes back decades. In 1942, a documentary series called Why We Fight was commissioned by the U.S. government's Office of War Information to show troops why the U.S. was fighting in World War II. In 1968, John Wayne played the lead in Green Berets, an openly anti-communist film produced at the height of the Vietnam War. And Catherine Bigelow, the director of The Hurt Locker, a film about the war in Iraq, has reportedly been given unprecedented access to classified information by the Obama administration and Department of Defense to make a film about the assassination of Osama bin Laden by the Navy SEALs. It's a collaboration that is currently under investigation by Pentagon officials for possibly breaking U.S. secrecy laws. Thankfully for the filmmakers producing Active Valor, there isn't any law prohibiting active duty soldiers from doing a star turn on the big screen. This is perhaps the first Hollywood movie that arises from a boring bureaucratic document from the bowels of the Pentagon. The Quadrennial Defense Review, every four years the Pentagon asks itself, what should our strategy be and what do we need to do to make sure we're adequately postured to fulfill it? And in this case, in 2006, the document said that the country needed a lot more special operations forces than it currently possessed. The SEALs were trying to find ways to boost their public profile, their public persona, and it so happened that this film production company was interested in, in making some commercials for the SEALs. That began a series of conversations that eventually led to the making of Active Valor. So 
there was an interest from the Sills saying, look, if there's so much interest about us. I mean, the Sills are in so many movies, they're in so many television shows, and just in the last year, uh, they've been in the news so much. If there's so much interest about them, then let's at least kind of control it and try to get it close to what we actually do. We got live fire way more than points. I have some friends who are Navy Sills, and they're very close to the people who made the film, and that was their explanation to me, was look, we just didn't want to be portrayed the way Hollywood has always portrayed us. We wanted one accurate film out there. This is a singularly positive message. So it creates an audiovisual atmosphere in which things look like the military and things become militarized. When you bring that graphic style and you incorporate all the kind of high-tech weaponry and graphics into war films, you have a kind of a total audiovisual atmosphere that renders the military a very positive force in society. And that is what critics find troubling about the partnership between Hollywood and the military. The Pentagon is open about what it calls the Top Gun effect, when the 1986 Tom Cruise film drove up recruitment figures for the US Navy and Air Force by 500%. These films are fictional, but the impact they have on society can be very real. I'm gonna send you up against the best. You two characters are going to Top Gun. Ow! Top Gun was enormously popular, and I think it probably was part of the mobilization of mind, if you will, the training of American sight and vision so that the wars that the administration was engaged in were made to seem much more legitimate and okay. Most people in the defense establishment love them. Uh, these kinds of publicity efforts are, you know, viewed as a, a critical part of keeping the public on the side of the military. Let me tell you how the world really works. And it's not just active valor. Active valor is just a particularly striking example of a phenomenon that's so deeply ingrained in Hollywood that we barely even notice it exists. There's been a clear escalation in the military entertainment complex. Soldiers have replaced actors. A director has been given special access to military files. And there's a barrage of films coming out every year with some element of Pentagon involvement. But if these films are weapons in an information war, then who is the enemy? Well, I find the idea of the military uh, entertainment complex to be extremely interesting, especially uh, in the past, there seems to have developed a really unhealthy relationship between the military and filmmakers. And uh, I guess the word that comes to mind is propaganda. America is a country where there's a huge amount of distrust of government. So that I think if you know any effort to make wars uh, that are illegitimate seem legitimate will be treated with some skepticism. But on the other hand, if it comes from movies, hey, we all love movies. and they're likely to be more believed, even if they're saying things that are straight out of uh, the Defense Department. And I will leave no one behind. Hollywood, for all its creativity, is not an original place. They see an idea that works, and they're just gonna use it over and over and over again. So my guess is you're gonna see a lot more active valors in the coming years. A lot more recruitment promos dressed up as feature films, brought to you by Hollywood's Industrial Military Entertainment Complex otherwise known as Militainment. More Global Village Voices now on the world of Militainment. Active Valor is presented as this documentary-style depiction of life in the Navy. And although a filmmaker and artist should feel free to experiment and toy with the constraints of the form, here it seems to be used to be pushing a very specific agenda. Thank heavens that the action sequences are so poorly conceived and the acting so terrible because if this thing were watchable, it might be dangerous. It's Act of Valor's big selling point, the degree of collaboration between the filmmakers and the military, the fact that it has real active duty Navy SEALs, real military hardware, and even real bullets. You can see why filmmakers and the military would, would want to get in bed with one another. If you're a filmmaker, you get to use authentic military hardware, real weapons, and if you're the military, you get to be portrayed in a favourable light. But I'm not sure that the viewer in the middle gets the best of the deal. 